All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is going through some of the final properties that you may find of interest while working with terrain. Okay, for starters, I'm going to go ahead and close out the train editing dialog because we're going to go and grab just the properties of the train info actor itself. Now, I might still have it selected, and no, I don't, so let me go and hunt around a little bit, or be even quicker, double click train info and just search for it that way. So there we've got the train info conveniently kind of hidden underneath the train. But train info, you saw we had various editing control inside the train editing dialog, but this is still an actor. And as you saw in the last lesson, we edited a few properties for the deco layer under the train info properties. Let me move the view into a little bit better of an angle here. All right, let's go over just a few of these that might be useful when further editing or optimizing terrain. So first off, BK collision half res. If your mesh is very detailed and it's very critical that it reacts smoothly with Karma, you can activate this and there won't be as much uh, geometry data, actually fewer triangles being fed to Karma, which can improve uh, speed for dynamic, uh, dynamic situations or simulations. Um, after that, you have Deco Layer Offset. What Deco Layer Offset does is say you had a static mesh where its pivot point wasn't on the ground. Of course, these are. But if you say you had a, a custom static mesh or one that didn't line up perf perfectly with the ground, you can raise or lower this off the ground by adjusting the Deco Layer Offset. If I set it to 100, you notice all the Deco Layer jumps off the, off the surface itself, off the terrain, and negative if necessary, set it below the terrain. In our case, zero works fine. Mm -hmm. Just if you had a custom a static mesh, you realize that it was above or below the train, you can very quickly edit that with the deco layer offset. Keep in mind that this affects mm -hmm. all deco layers. And mm -hmm. zero that back out. And under that, we'll hit deco layers in just a second. I want to finish off the main terrain info properties. Inverted, true or false. If we set that to true, and we move underneath, you notice that the train is basically upside down. Now, this is a very interesting method of making something like, say, the roof of a cave. Hint, hint. So let me go back and just, if you wanted to invert the train so it, it's visible from above, if you're using it anywhere above the player, that would be very useful. Set it to false and go back to the normal type train we can reside on top of. We'll get into layers in just a second. Now, terrain map. Say you wanted to completely swap out the map for something else. Say you would you would come up with a grayscale in Photoshop or your favorite uh, paint program and brought it in. You could actually change the terrain map from here. You could simply import a texture into the texture browser and set it. One thing to keep in mind, though, I'll point this out in the, uh, the train editing dialog. If you were to bring in an 8-bit grayscale, it would show as format P8. To get the uh, the full detail train is capable of, you would want to convert it to uh, to the internal 16-bit format, and you can do that by simply right-clicking on it. I won't get the menu now because this is already a 16-bit texture. But again, if it was an 8-bit texture and you needed the ex extra bit depth, simply right-click here, and you'd be able to uh, to change it over to 16-bit. That is, if you had brought it in and assigned a train map through this setting. After that, we've got terrain scale. Now. This would work very well if you had. Um, well, this is just the overall scale of um, of the terrain itself. If you had, if you wanted more detail, you could bring in a large texture, which would make initially make the te uh, the terrain very large. But then you could set the x and y scale less, and you can see it would it would bring the terrain in a lot tighter. Of course, this would be more triangles in a tighter area, which could slow down the game, especially in karma situations. So that's not necessarily a good thing to do. You might want to just leave that based off its default density and adjust using the overall map size. Now with the Z scale, this is a little bit more interesting. It's not the overall resolution. It's the uh, the high or not the how tightly packed the triangles are. It's how high the uh, the map is. Say you know, and notice real quick. Let me wander over here to the texture browser again. And if I go hunt down, take a look at the train map. Even though we've made some noticeable. Uh, detail in 3D, you can easily see the different edits and the hills we've created from pulling and pushing the train or painting on it. This is the resulting grayscale. It's barely noticeable in some places that we've made any editing to it at all. Now, say for example, you had just brought in a texture from Photoshop that you where you'd use the full bit depth from white to black. That would be in a, a very, very high change in Z. So you'd have hills that were too high and then the valleys were too, too narrow. The map wouldn't be anywhere near playable. 
and you didn't want to go back and readjust your scale, your um, grayscale level, you could simply adjust the Z scale. If I was to bring that down by half, notice how I just dropped this level. So if you had a texture that was way, it was varying too much in Z, you can simply scale that back with terrain scale. Enough mm -hmm. blabbing about three numbers. On to vertex light map. If you have a custom um, light map, basically any texture you want, you can set that here. As a matter of fact, my trippy little uh, color map might work. Yeah, yuck. But you get the you get the point. If you wanted to paint, basically paint uh, light onto the the train as opposed to baking it on through uh, through rebuilding, this would give you the the means to do so. Let me clear that back off, and might have to rebuild to fix that up, like such. So we'll go back, and it looks like I might have caught the texture on that deco layer, but we'll be looking at its properties soon enough anyway. And bring up. Let's see. Hunt down the train info one last time. And continuing on. So that's Vertex Light Map. Now, back up to the whole deco layer section. This contains a lot of useful stuff when editing. You, this gives a, a good, an extra level of control. Let me go in and see if I can clear off that extra colors. Yeah, the color got applied to. Let me go to the grass level. Color map. If I clear that out, force clear it. Okay, back to where we were. Now, some interesting properties for deco layers. First, we have a line to terrain. I think this might be a little bit more visible in the first one. So let me go over to a line to terrain, 1 or 0. Setting this to 1 will cause the, uh, this, the, uh, the uh, decoration to go straight out from the normal of, the, uh, of whatever quad it's sitting on or whatever face. So you can see as the uh, the train started to move upward, these start to shoot off the side. It can be kind of interesting if you have more mechanical stuff, but organic um, objects like plants usually grow upward, so it's best to leave that mm. off for like grass and stuff. If you had just junk like pieces of m like metallic junk just laying around, you might want to try turning that on to test the effect. Color map. You saw this is where we can take a, a color where we had the uh, the stripes, or as a matter of fact, where we have the varying color for the uh, for the first brush type map. If you wanted to go in there and change it real quick, you could come in and do so. Density map. This is where we first assign that back in the in the uh, texture editing dialog. If you wanted to swap out the density map for another alpha or grayscale, go ahead and do that here. Density multiplier. Now this is a little bit interesting. Notice how even when we painted on a pretty solid amount or a, a fairly solid amount into the grayscale, we still have a uh, like only so dense that we can get before it just randomizes instead of adding more. Inside the density multiplier, we can increase that. If we up this all the way to 0.5, mm -hmm. notice we now have a lot more. Now there is one more limit I'll be pointing out in just a second, but you can see we can adjust various. Um, just just the density, the the minimum and maximum density for this area. So mm -hmm. take out some so we have like tighter clumps and then more wide space or bring them closer together. Mm -hmm. Or even drop this back down mm -hmm. so it's not so noticeable. So that's density multiplier. And disregard terrain lighting. What this will do, let me see if I can find a place where I've baked a shadow, or there's a shadow near one of these meshes. I might have to paint a few over the shadow to really get that effect. Basically what it is, is the the light value. Yeah, this grass should work. Let me go and grab the grass layer. Alright, now we have disregard lighting. If we turn this on, it no longer respects the light value of the quad it's sitting on. Whereas before, this area, this terrain was darker. And the, uh, the static mesh itself was picking that up and being equally dark. If you di turn disregard terrain lighting on, then it'll go back to being full bright unless we use lit directional, which I'll talk about in just a second. Let me turn that back off so we grab the actual color of what it's residing on. Now, draw order. This might be a little bit tricky to, to see without some of the other meshes in view. I don't know if you can see in the distance. Basically, what it's doing now without sorting is it's not really deciding <coughs> for sure whether or not a s one static mesh is in front of another. It's actually drawing the ones in the distance with the same priority as the ones in the foreground. It's hard to show and it will probably be even harder to see once this is resized, the video is resized to its final size. But basically, um, if you're having a problem where you're looking through a setting mesh or a decoration, but a decoration in the background is drawn over it, then you need to tr uh, change the draw order. I usually find that draw back to front works pretty well. 